This should be interesting. It's a twin socket, a double gang socket, uh, that was sent to me by Star Delta because he'd got a load to try out. And it's made by a, well, it's a UK branded. It's made in Malaysia, but it's made by a, it's a UK branded MK. And what makes it special is that instead of the traditional terminals where you've got recessed little brass terminals with a screw going in from the side that you strip the wire and either just put it straight down or fold it to actually fill up the terminal and then tighten the screw. Instead of that, they have these Wago style pop-up terminals. So to terminate it, all you theoretically have to do is get your twin nerf, which I've formed to the perfect shape and size, just like in these adverts you see for stuff like this. Uh, strip it so that the wires are the correct length, according to the gauge here. And then pop the wires in one at a time, although I'm just going to stuff the whole lot in at once like this. Uh, pushing each down firmly and then click the terminal over, click the terminal over, and click the terminal over. And that is effectively a cable terminated into it. They've got three terminals to allow either radial circuits where the cable comes along, loops in, goes out, or the ring circuit, as is popular in the UK, especially for these sockets, where you've got a continuous link, ring of cable that goes back to the distribution board so it can loop in and loop out. But they've also got a third terminal to allow for spurs, where you may have a few spur coming off that. Say, for instance, in a kitchen, you've got a, a row of sockets, but you want to add a spur for a switched uh, feed down to another socket for the, the dishwasher or whatever. This is what you can do with this. It's quite nice. It also has the little uh, recessed probing terminals so you can actually test uh, for connection for the neutral there, live there, and then you've got the, the solid brass bar there for the earth. So I thought it'd be interesting to actually pop this open and uh, check how it clamps it onto the bus bars presumably inside, if it's similar to the wago style connectors. So I wonder why they've got this little raised lip here. Is it to protect these from being lifted up accidentally, just the, particularly the earth ones? I'm not sure. Or is it just because the earth connection has this little sleeve going on it? I'm actually seeing a little bite since I put those in. It's got the little spring-loaded terminal just like the Wigo that has clamped it and pushed it down onto the bus bar. Interesting. So let's take this apart. I shall pop these screws out. This is a common approach in the UK. The screws are usually captive in the socket or switch or whatever you have, uh, just basically pushed into the plastic. Quite precision that they do that. It's held in by a couple of rivets, which I shall now drill out. Drill in. I may have to push this down to do it. This is going to get noisy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's just snagged in the drill. That's fine. Oh, brass on top. It doesn't look like brass underneath. Hmm, intriguing. Is this just for show? I shall check this. Let's see if the same thing happens again. I'll go slower this time. That looks like it. Now, is it going to come out easily? Because I do see that there are significant clips here. That's got me intrigued. Uh, do I have a... Hold on, where's a magnet? Where is a magnet? No, it's, it's not. Uh, it's certainly not. I shall explore that and see if I can work out what that is. I'm going to scratch that. It's not aluminium, is it? Ew. I'm not sure. It's a silvery metal. Suddenly it's going through a mind. How do I test this for if it is aluminium? Uh, brass coated aluminium. I suppose it's feasible. Hmm. Right, anyway. Let's see if I can pop this off. Let's not. Let's not go down the aluminium route. Aluminum. It's not an ideal electrical material. So am I going to be able to pop this off? This may be destructive. I, I mean, I'm taking the thing to bits anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I may have to pause momentarily while I do this, because uh, I don't know if this is going to come off easily. But having said that, if I'm going to break it, I'm going to break it. So let's uh, just... Like that. 
<laughs> this is going to be making really loud microphone popping noises probably. That's what usually happens. To accompany the sound of the compressor on the back, because I forgot to turn the dehumidifier off. Uh, this isn't coming out easily. That's okay. If it starts taking too long, I shall pause as I occasionally have to do. This is well pressed in. Mm. Let's not impale myself in the process. Well, that's a good start. It's actually coming up there. What about here? That's coming up there as well. This is where it all disintegrates into lots of little pieces suddenly, as I kind of expect it to happen. But the main thing is that I want to see what the uh, bus bars are. Well, I want to see what they're made of now. This is when, as I say, I'd like to know... I hope that's not aluminium. That would be a terrible direction to go. Let's see if I can impale myself in the process of trying to get this out. This is what happens ultimately when people invest in metals like copper and brass that are essential to the electrical industry. This has taken ages. Right, tell you what, I'm going to pause momentarily, okay? Ta-da! Yes, it is now opened and showered into lots of little pieces. Is this double pole switching? Oh, it is double pole switching, look of it. Yeah, it looks like double pole switching, that's nice. Uh, what about this... Uh, what are these made of? I mean, they look like copper. I do hope they are copper, particularly at the currents that we tend to use in the UK. I suppose, you know, ultimately, not much different to the currents used elsewhere in the world, but the advantage in the UK is that at 240 volts, uh, a 13 amp socket, which this is, which can be fused up to 13 amps and is in a ring main rated 32 amps, can deliver, uh, well, the socket can run a three kilowatt appliance, um, but uh, the total ring can run something like 8 kilowatts, so that's quite good. Right, let's pull these out. Just going to experiment, just going to zoom down actually, so you can see what's going on here. Let's cantilever little terminals. Oh, it just popped out actually. Yeah, let's not cantilever little terminals. Ooh. Let's grip this and lift it out. So the same style of system that uh, as it pushes it down, it pushes the uh, terminal down so you can get the copper wire in and then it pulls it lip when you release it. it this is quite hard to push uh, uh, given it's quite sharp. When you release it again, it pulls it back up against uh, the bus bar there. So that you know that's it locked in place, but the spring, the spring wire here is just purely holding it in place against that. Oh. But these are uh, coated. Is this copper? It looks like copper. Let's scrape it. Let us scrape the stuff. Let's file it. These are the ones I've been more worried about being solid copper. It looks like it's solid copper. This is good, but it is plated with something there with a, a sort of uh, white metal on the surface. I wonder what that is. How easy is it to get that terminal out? I think, to be honest, to get it out, you'd have to actually press it in at the same time as lifting it out. So I'll try that. Oh, there we go. Let's have another nibble at that. Hold on, I'm just taking it off shot momentarily to give it a deeper file. Deep file. Looks like copper to me. That's good. Uh, right. So that's the earth is the only bit that's kind of like a bit weird here. The earth is a bit weird. I mean, it looks like the, it looks like copper pins going over the end of that. But is the, is that just... Brass finished aluminum. Let me just cut some off. Not sure. Not sure what that metal is. Uh, let's file the top. I'll just take it off shot again. Filing. Trying to file.
is it actually just coated? It might be actually brass with a, a white metal coating the inside. That would, that's made me feel a lot better. That's just made me feel a lot better that they've just put some sort of uh, electrode plating on it. I'm not sure why they're doing that. Must be a reason. It'll be scientific. Let me just file through this thin layer of the white metal. And it looks as though I'm straight into brass. Yay, that's good. That's good. That is such a relief. I thought there it was like... I thought that was a uh, brass-coated aluminum. That wouldn't have been nice. That wouldn't have been nice. This is fine. So it's pretty much what uh, what we expected here. Um, these little uh, fingers here are the bus bars, and when you press it down, it releases that metal spring down to let you get the wire in, then grips it back so that it can't be pulled out. It looks pretty solid, actually. That looks very acceptable. And because uh, these are all paired together, that's where it's seeing all the current flowing through the circuit. But all it's seeing here is the supply to the local socket. And although these are rated 13 amps, they usually uh, say maximum of this current per socket. It doesn't do the full um, 13 amps. Not sure what that is. I'm not sure what this socket is rated. It's not rated usually to have a 3 kilowatt load, pl load plugged into each socket. Now I kind of want to get this out, actually. I want to get that out. Right, tell you what, one moment, please. Interesting construction. I thought that they'd... I was wondering how they'd got that small insert in there to go down and then spread out to three terminals. It turns out there's a separate module clips on from above with the little cantilevers. That lets us see the cantilevers. Uh, hinging down to actually push those things open. It seems okay, actually. I think I'm happy at this. This uh, looks all right, indeed. After that little sort of concern about the uh, bus bar metal and finding it is just sort of plated brass. I wonder why they've done that. Any idea of what they've done here? Is it silver? It could be silver. Do you think that's a silver plating the brass? I'm not really sure. But it's the same arrangement. It's got the uh, little cluster of terminals here that can be pushed down to actually clamp onto that. Yeah, it's neat. It's very good. Uh, this could well be the way ahead. I wonder if they're just testing the water first by uh, putting out uh, the sockets and then the switches will follow. Because it will effectively require quite a radical redesign of the sockets. But uh, certainly this looks not bad. And uh, when you... Uh, the depth isn't really sort of significantly different to a normal socket. So there we go. The NK sockets. There's the little shutters, by the way, that when you put a, a plug in, it, uh, it pushes these little... Uh, plungers down these little sort of keys. What have they got here for that? Have they got a different approach here? Hmm, I'm thinking they've got a double-barreled approach here. It's not just pushing straight down. I think uh, it will have to be pushed back as you push it in to actually slide down. Oh, I get it. Oh, that's quite clever. Oh, I've not seen that before. Uh, when you push it in, it's actually latching closed, so you can't push them down unless the pin goes in here, splays that apart, and then it can pop down to actually uh, cover the sockets. That's quite neat. And it's pushed down by the sort of angular pins here, by the look of it. So yeah, it looks like, uh, it looks like a quite a radical redesign, but I like it. Um, it looks all robust enough. It's got good solid uh, brass and copper connections. Yeah, it looks good. It looks perfectly acceptable. So yeah, interesting direction. I think I'm liking that direction they're going in. Hopefully they'll introduce uh, a lot more other components soon to actually match these. 